The ability to accurately forecast the market can have a dramatic impact on your overall trading results. In this lesson, I'm gonna teach you how to forecast the market in a way that you've probably never seen before. This is level three understanding, time frame analysis, time frame forecasting, and the speed of money flow. This lesson is gonna be a continuation and an expansion on the topics that you learned in lesson seven of this masterclass series. So if you haven't watched lesson seven yet, I would encourage you to go back and watch that first before you watch this lesson. So that being said, let's get into it. In lesson seven of this masterclass series, I introduce you to the idea of the round trip trade cycle. What is that? The round trip trade cycle is the act of forming a trading idea and actually executing a trade, getting into the market, all the way to the conclusion of that trade idea, the fulfillment for better or for worse, causing you to close that trade. So in simple terms, it's the act of opening a trade, being in the trade, and then closing the trade. That is the round trip cycle that I'm referring to. So before we get into more of the nitty gritty of this lesson, I wanna briefly walk you through an understanding that when I share this with other traders, it proves to be very insightful. As retail traders, we are trying to mirror what the banks are doing. We're not trading the size they do, and we don't have the market-making obligations and all those things, but we are highly interested in understanding how they conduct business. Why is that? It's because they're the ones that move price, not us. We want to participate in their price movement so that we can make a profit. So it makes sense that we understand how their business works on every level possible. So... Let's start with the institutional bank and the market maker in understanding how they process transactions on each side of the spectrum. We have two different sides of the spectrum. We have algorithmic market making, which is a lot of very fast transactions happening. And then we have proprietary trading, which is much slower. Let me explain why. Proprietary trading. These are the traders that are assigned to actively trade a sum of money that is assigned to them for that bank. They're trying to make a return just like a retail trader would, just a much different process than most retail traders, okay? When they are moving the size that they need to make a return on, remember, we're talking billions, sometimes hundreds of billions of dollars here that they're trying to collectively make a return on. They're trading a much, much higher size than you or me as a retail trader would typically trade. Something that's good to understand about their process and what they have to go through is that for large transactions, phones are still required. Why is this? It's because they want to record and verify the conversations that happen. This reduces the transaction speed much further than say algorithmic market making or high speed trading. Now, this is important again because they're moving such a big size that if something goes sideways or something doesn't work out and someone says, I didn't tell you to do that, or I did tell you to do that. They could reference that recording of that transaction being entered into the market to see who said what and who's liable for whatever outcome happened. So the key to take away is that this reduces the transaction speed. And the other thing to take away is that all the large, really big market moving transactions are verified and put in through this process, a much slower process. Now, the second thing to understand is that algorithmic market making, which is the other responsibility of the investment bank, this is taking all the volume that comes in through retail brokerages and all those different outlets, all of our trades as retail traders, all these things typically just go to an algorithm that is trying to match up buyers and sellers as fast as possible. So what's insightful to take away from this is that all those algorithmic market making transactions don't really overall have a huge market moving effect. Whereas the positions that are coming through the proprietary trading department are large, heavy volume, and they're slower in nature. And slow transactions and big transactions put together are what stabilize market trends. Market environments hold consistently because of these proprietary traders pushing that volume. You got to think every big trend that breaks out, these traders are on the phone building positions slowly. When that market is coming to its end, that trend is coming to its end, these traders are again on the phone unwinding those positions because it's such a big size. 
Whereas us as retail traders, we're just trying to get in the big move, but it happens instantly for us, which is awesome. We don't have to deal with any of the slowness that these guys deal with, but these guys ultimately know what the true nature of the market is too. So, you know, there's benefits on each side. But if we could get inside their mind and we think like them, then we can get all the benefits of understanding how they trade, where the market's likely to go, but none of the speed restrictions of having to pick up the phone and make something happen. So you can see where we live in a really good sweet spot as retail traders if you have the correct knowledge. So here's another graphic that'll really help you get your head around this concept when it comes to the timeframes that you wanna trade and the opportunities associated with those timeframes. Starting with the left side, we have small fast money. Notice that there's a tick chart, a five minute, 15 minute, 30 minute, the lower timeframes on that left side of the scale. On the, the right side of the scale, we have big slow money. Big slow money is associated with the four hour, daily, weekly, monthly timeframes, timeframes that move very slow. Again, on the left side, we have market making volume. We have a large amount. And then as you can see, that volume scales down as we get to the monthly timeframes associated with that bigger movement. That's where we get more into the proprietary position trading volume. We want to be actively tracking those higher timeframes. Why? Because that's where the big money is getting positioned to sustainably move the market. Why do we want to trade a sustainably moving market? Because that's where the easy money is made. We want to spot trends that are stable. And those trends are, get, are going to happen because the proprietary traders at the investment banks are actively building positions in that direction and then ultimately liquidating their positions in that direction. That's when those trends will actually end. You don't want to trade a tick chart. Nobody trades a tick chart because you're dealing with something that has no sustainability in its movement on that time frame. Maybe you don't want to be trading a monthly chart either. Maybe that's too slow, but somewhere in the middle is usually where most traders want to live to be able to take advantage of short-term opportunities, but also take advantage of long-term trend stability, which is extremely, extremely important. So now let's talk about higher time frame activation, and we're going to walk through an example. Again, why do we care about the higher time frames? It's because we want to know what the big slow money is doing, and we really want to know when they're becoming active. So let's look at an example. Here's a one hour time frame. We're referencing our contraction zone there at the bottom of the chart. And as you can see, we've added something a little bit different here. We've had the market run out of the contraction zone up through a previous high point. That high point was exactly 46 periods back. That's where that high was formed. Now, what's the significance of this? That 46 periods, which is 46 one hour bars on this bar chart or on this candle chart, I should say, equals 1.91 days, basically two days. So that means a two day time frame horizon has become active. Why can we say it's become active? Because time frames test whether they're going to break out or not when they come through previous highs or lows. So because this is 46 periods back, because it, that equals roughly two days, we know that anybody that's trading on a two-day time horizon is starting to get interested in this market, particularly proprietary traders that are trading on that time horizon. Let's keep going. As the market goes into the multi-leg expansion, which it does the majority of the time, it goes down through a past low. This low is from 67 periods ago. It's a 67 period activation. This equals 2.79 days. We could round that up to three days. So in the first high that we broke, it was a two day activation. This one is now a three day activation. So you're starting to see that the time frame activation is getting bigger and bigger. Big slow money is becoming more active the further this cycle plays out. Let's keep going. As we continue the multi-leg expansion, now we go through the previous swing high point of the cycle. This is 95 periods back. This equals, in one hour bar chart terms, 3.95 days, basically four days. Notice what's happening to the swings. They're getting longer and they're getting bigger, which we're gonna be interested in because we're interested in big movement. That's where you're gonna make your profit. We keep going here, market pushes up a little bit more, but ultimately comes back down to the swing low point. Now we have a 162 period activation, which is equal to 6.75 days, which is basically a week. Now, because we have come through this low point, 
that would have a big influence on the decisions of someone trading on a weekly time horizon, aka big banks, proprietary traders, we can anticipate that there will be a big move away from this price level that will take shape on the weekly chart that we wanna prepare for. We can expect that the move from this price level should be big, it should take a long time, and it should be very significant. As a result, the market spikes up, goes through the swing high point, which gives us 120 period activation or five days, which means that the market could potentially take a five day breath at this level or continue for five more days minimum to the upside. Just to go one more level deep on this subject, this is worth bringing up. As you start looking into time frames and you start playing around with this stuff, you'll notice that there is a lot of symmetry in the markets and that symmetry can help you with expectations of how long a particular market move could take to play out which is something that is gonna really help us when forecasting. That's what this lesson's about. It's about time frame forecasting. How long is it gonna take me to get the payday I'm looking for? Let's run through another example using a one hour bar chart. Similar to the last example, we have our contraction zone. We go into our expansion and then we run a previous high. This particular high was 93 one hour periods back. That 93 hours divided by 24 equals 3.87 days. What time frames would we wanna look at that would help us understand what patterns or what market trends could be forming from taking out this previous high? Well, we could look at obviously the hour, which we're looking at. We could look at the four hour, we could look at the daily, maybe even potentially the weekly. But again, we're not quite at the weekly time frame activation. So in this case, I would say, let's look at the daily chart. So if we look at the daily chart, here's what that looked like on that chart. We can see that we ran a previous high and there was really no follow through on the daily trend. At this point, we could also come to the conclusion that we should continue to track the daily chart to see where it ultimately lands and settles in the next big trending move because it's certainly going to present itself on that time frame since it's been activated. Now here's where we start getting into market symmetry. We have a few different numbers we could work with that will help us forecast the market. Again, we're not seeing any daily follow through to the upside. So this might be an opportunity for us to trade short. Maybe the weekly trend is already short so we have a larger directional bias in that direction. So if we short from here, where would we want to aim for? We would want to aim for the cycle swing low point. That's where liquidity is. And that is going to be the lowest point since the last contraction box. If we take some measurements and we count back how long it's been since that cycle low till the last high point we just came through, there it's 46 periods since that cycle low. A way that we could use this in looking for symmetry in the market is that I can expect that potentially it could take at least 46 periods if I short right now to get to the cycle low point. And what happened? 48 periods, not 46, but 48 periods, which is very close, is what it took to ultimately come down through that liquidity point of the current master pattern cycle. And what's also interesting, because there's so much symmetry in the markets, is that if you add 46 periods to 48 periods, you come up with 94 periods, which is one period more than the original 93 period activation. So it shows you that the daily is still active and it's still operating on these rel relative time frames. And again, we know all this simply by counting back how many periods it was before we came through a predominant high or low. And that way we know what's active, how long things should generally take to play out. And it really helps us fine tune our expectations when forecasting markets. So what's the takeaway of this lesson? Speed of money flow is what creates trend stability and we are highly interested in the trends of the market. If you wanna forecast the future of the market, Figure out what timeframes have been recently activated from the market makers or the institution's perspective, aka big slow money. Use those timeframes to analyze what price is doing and where it's likely to go. Look for symmetry in the market to help you come up with realistic expectations on how long certain opportunities may take to play out. If you put 
all these things together, you will find that you will be forecasting and knocking trades out of the park better than you ever have before.